Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. Today I would like to share with you a poem by Robert Service. It is entitled The Cremation of Sam McGee. It was published in 1907. The dates of the poet are 1874 when he was born and he died in 1958. The poem concerns the cremation of a prospector who freezes to death near Lake Labart Burge, located in the Yukon in Canada. For those of us who are not geographically savvy, the Yukon Territory is in the western part of Canada. It's nestled east of Alaska and north of the province of British Columbia. In this poem, the title character is from the fictional town of Plum Tree, Tennessee. Robert Service, the poet, based the poem on an experience of a doctor friend of his who found a corpse in the cabin of a derelict steamer. The friend used the defunct boiler in this steamer to cremate the body of a prospector because the ground was frozen too hard for burial. In this poem, the first stanza is repeated again at the very end. The Cremation of Sam McGee. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was at night on the marge of Lake Labarge, I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell, though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold. Through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we close, then the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe. He turned to me and said, Cap, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. Then he says with a short moan, it's the cursed cold. And it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that, foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh, and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried horror-driven, with a corpse half hid <clears throat> that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now, a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were numb, in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long night, by the lone fire light, while the huskies round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh God, how I loathe that thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I ha felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it harkened with a grin. 
till I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and a derelict there lay. It was dammed in the ice, but I saw in a thrice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then, said I, here, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying round, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared. Such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. <laughs> <laughs> and the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke in an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out and they danced about. Here again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked and it's time I looked. <laughs> then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile and said, please, Close that door. It's, it's fine in here. But I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. <laughs> there are strange things in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake the Barge, I cremated Sam McGee. Mr. Postmaster. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>